Okay, guys, welcome back to our second session and let's resume. Okay, we were uh, reading Animal Farm Chapter 9. Let's continue. Uh, Maya had ended her reading by uh, basically summarizing or summing up here that uh, uh, the animals were looking forward to their freedom uh, or they were enjoying their freedom. At least they're not slaves as they, they were uh, for Jones's days, calling him master. And uh, even if they were a hard, working hard, they're still working hard for their own advantage or for their own benefit. Okay. Uh, volunteers for reading next, please. Uh, Maya, thank you uh, for reading. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see. Ahmed, please. Go ahead, Han. We're starting here. There were many. There were many. Uh, there were many more mouths uh, to feed now. In the autumn, the four uh, souls had all littered about uh, simultaneously, simultaneously, producing thirty-one young pigs. Simultaneously, producing thirty-one young pigs between them. The young pig, uh, pigs uh, were piebald. Piebald. Uh, uh, Poibird and as Napoleon was the only boy on the farm, it was possible to guess at their uh, parentage. Okay, so it let's pause right here one second. Okay, okay, now the population of the farm is increasing. All right, and we see here that the pigs uh, or one uh, in the autumn, the four sows or the four uh, uh, pigs, uh, with lady female pigs, they produced a total of 31 young pigs. Okay, so 31 young pigs were additional people on the farm. That means now uh, um, they have to feed feed more people okay and uh they're here suggesting that basically uh that napoleon was the father of these pigs okay so let's just put that in our uh and you know let's highlight that in our notes that it's suggested here that napoleon is the parent uh for these pigs okay so uh continue ahmed it was announced uh it was announced that later uh when uh, bricks and timber had been purchased a school room would be built in the farmhouse garden for the time being, the young pigs were given their instruction uh, by Napoleon himself in the farmhouse kitchen. They took her exercise in the garden and were discouraged from playing with the other young animals. Okay, about so let's stop here. Too. Okay, one okay. second. So let's talk about the pigs. How is Napoleon uh, treating the pigs differently? Okay, how is Napoleon treating the pigs differently? Can you tell us, Kinsey? Can you say that question again? How are the pigs being treated differently by Napoleon? They uh, took their exercise in the garden. They was uh, he was an um, instruction by Napoleon by himself. Good. Okay, so Napoleon in here the is the kitchen uh, in the farmhouse kitchen. Good. They get a course for playing with others, young animals. Okay, so here we could see that they're also privileged, okay? Uh, uh, here we see that, number one, Napoleon is planning on educating them, okay? As soon as the pigs were born, the 31 young pigs, uh, Napoleon made a decision that he is going to build a schoolroom in the farmhouse garden, okay? And remember, the farmhouse was only allowed for the pigs to settle in, not for the rest of the animals. And uh, this, of course, schoolroom is going to be targeted at educating the pigs or the young pigs. Number two, uh, again here, they were exercising in the garden and they were instructed by Napoleon himself as uh, a father figure, okay? Because remember, Napoleon is tied to their parentage or that he is the suspected uh, or he is the father of those pigs, all right? Also, he asked them not to associate with the other pigs. So here we see that these 31 young pigs uh, received a special treatment and again, uh, in terms of education, in terms of being instructed by Napoleon himself directly, and in terms of having access to the farmhouse and in the garden. And they were uh, uh, basically considered to be different and discouraged from associating with the other young animals. All right. Uh, the pigs in general also were getting a different treatment. Okay. As Ahmed is about to read. Okay. Ahmed, about this time. About this time too, it was laid down uh, as a rule that when a pig uh, and any other animal met on the path, the other animal must uh, stand aside. And also that all pigs of, of whatever degree, degree we have to uh, we have uh, we're to have the privilege of wearing green ribbons on their tails on Sundays. Okay. Okay. The farm so day, continue. continue. The farm had a, had had a fairly successful year, uh, but it was still short of money. There were to be uh, there there were the bricks, sand, and lime uh, for the schoolroom to be purchased. 
uh, and it would also be necessary to begin saving up again for the machinery for the windmill. Then there were uh, lamp oil and candles for the house, sugar for Napoleon's own table. He forbade uh, this to the other pigs uh, on the ground that it made them fat. And all the usual replacements such as tools, nails, Okay, I think we're unable to hear Ahmed. Can you guys hear him? No. no. Right, I think he became disconnected, maybe. Uh, or his internet is lagging. Nano, can you pick up? Okay, and all the usual replacements, such as tools, nails, string, coal, wire, scrap iron, and dog biscuits. A stump of hay and part of the potato crop were sold, were sold off. And they cut... Contracts for eggs was increased to six hundred a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the, that year, the hens barely hatched enough chicks to keep their numbers at the same level. level. Rations reduced in December were reduced again in February, and lanterns in the stalls were forbidden to save oil. But the pigs seemed uh, comfortable enough, and in fact, were putting on weight. If anything, one afternoon in late February, a warm, rich, appetizing scent, such as the animals had never. Uh, smelled before, wafted itself across the yard from the little brew house, which had been disused in Jones's times, uh, and which stood behind, uh, beyond the kitchen. Someone said it was the smell of cooking barley. The animals sniffed the air hungrily and wondered, and wondered whether a warm mash was this um, was being prepared for their supper. But no warm mash appeared. And on the following Sunday, it was announced that from now outwards, onwards, all barley should be reserved for the pigs. The field beyond the orchard had already been sown with barley, and all the news soon leaked out that every pig was now receiving a ration of a pint of beer daily, with half a gallon for Napoleon himself, which is always served to him in the Crown Derby soup tureen. Great. Okay, so as we see here, guys, that again, we see or we meet the idea of barley. All right. And this was the decision. Uh, and for him to grow this barley in this uh, room that was supposed to be safe for animals at the due of retirement. And we said that growing the barley had an association with, with again, uh, uh, again, what is the idea? What is the barley related or, or in a relationship to? Alcohol. Yeah. Good. All right. So the idea of him uh, planning on brewing and distilling his own alcohol on the farm. Okay. Remember Napoleon's experience with alcohol. How was it? Can someone explain or remind us how was Napoleon's experience with alcohol? What was his? Uh, yes, Judy, please. Uh, he drank too much from it, which made him uh, like tired. Uh, but... Uh, Let's use the word intoxicated. Okay, okay, it intoxicated the Napoleon, uh, which made him unable to, um, to like work and move. Keep right, and he, to the point that he thought he was dying. Dying. Okay, dying. So this is when he declared that anyone who drinks will be um, basically punished by death. All right, and when he recovered. And he thought, and he found that it was just only a temporary sickness until the alcohol wore off, and he became better and he recovered. How did he change the? Uh, what did he change the rule to? That drinking is allowed. Just don't drink too to excess, right? That means that it's okay to drink. Uh, however, just don't overdo it. Okay, to the point where you might get really sick. Okay, as he thought he might die. All right, but did the pigs enjoy? Uh, the uh, the drinking yes they did all right and this is was uh, Napoleon's idea of growing his own alcohol or brewing uh, growing his own barley on the farm so that he could use it to start uh, brewing and making his own beer or so or so on or alcoholic beverages on the farm okay so now it is uh, the animals were uh, poorly uh, mistreated okay as we see here the only people that are actually putting on weight and gaining weight here is a sign or a symbol of they are doing much better than the other animals on the farm, uh, food-wise and, uh, and comfortable-wise and so on. 
all right their lives the pigs lives are not affected whatsoever okay but the animals are the ones that have to uh, uh basically uh compromise or give up things so that the farm could keep going okay we don't see napoleon giving up the sugar okay he added it as one of the things or one of the items that need to be purchased or procured for the farm he didn't go, give up the candles for his house okay uh, uh all these items are going to be necessarily purchased okay he even uh, uh, obligated uh the hens to give up 600 eggs per week not only 400 eggs because again money is in desperate need because all these items have to be purchased and of course the biscuits for the dogs uh, which are his security or his guarding system so he needs those to be also happy and satisfied on the other hand the animals how are they suffering their rations are deducted okay or readjusted as Wheeler would say uh month after month okay and now they were even uh not allowed to uh turn on the lanterns in their stalls, so they had to sit and stay in the dark to save oil so here we see that who has to give up who has to compromise the animals and the pigs basically continued to live in leverage and in um, you know utter comfortableness uh, without having to give up any of their uh, 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 things that they enjoyed. Okay, Napoleon even kept uh, sugar for himself at the table, and he didn't allow the other pigs to consume of it because he claimed that it could make them fat. So here again, we see Napoleon again his selfishness or the way that he uh, 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 you know wanted himself to be better. Or he only cared for his own satisfaction, not the rest of the fa not the rest of the farm. Okay. Now it was uh, declared that beer is going to be actually given clearly to the pigs. Okay. Every pig is going to receive a ration of a pint of beer daily. Napoleon will receive a half a gallon, which is more, and he is going to consume it from the cr the Crown Derby soup terrain which is those fancy royal uh, uh, top, uh, glassware that he's going to uh, drink his beer from, okay? Uh, continue, please, Nano. But if there were any hardships to be born, they were partly offset by the fact that life nowadays had a greater dignity than it had had before. There were more songs, more speeches, more possessions. Napoleon had commanded that once a week there should be held something called a spontaneous demonstration the object of which was to celebrate the struggles and triumphs of animal farm. At the appointed time, the animals would leave their work and march around the precincts of the farm in military formation, with the pigs leading, then the horses, then the cows, then the sheep, and then the poultry. The dogs flanked the procession at, at, and at the head of all marched Napoleon's black cocker. Boxer and clover always carried between them a green banner marked with the hoof and the horn on the caption. Long live comrade Napoleon. Afterwards, there were recitations of poems composed in Napoleon's honor and a speech by Squealer giving particulars of the latest increases in the production of foodstuffs. And on occasion, a shot was fired from the gun. The sheep were the greatest de devotees of the spontaneous demonstration. And if anyone complained, as a few animals sometimes did, when no pigs or dogs were near and they wasted that that they wasted time and meant a lot of standing about in the cold. The sheep were about were sure to silence them with a tremendous bleeding of four legs good, two legs ba bad. But by, but by and large the animals enjoyed these celebrations. They found it comforting to be reminded that after all, they were truly their own masters and that the work they did was for their own benefit. So that was what with the songs, the processions, squealers' lists of figures, the thunder of the gun, the crowing of the cocker, uh, and the fl mm -hmm. fluttering of the flag, they were able to forget that their bellies were empty, at least part of the time. Okay, so here Nano just summed it up in this one last line. Okay, why is Napoleon coming up with all these uh, spontaneous demonstrations and all this nonsense? And here, the key point is to get their minds off of their situation. And this is uh, the major thing uh, um, that, you know, usually mm, that is done to get the citizens to forget, okay? Uh, give them something uh, to focus on, all right? Uh, let them live in this illusion uh, that we are this perfect society that is doing great, okay? And let them forget about their hunger. 
Let them forget about their labor. Let them forget about the hardships that they're facing and the struggles that they're going through. Let them forget about this all and give them something happy. Okay. And uh, as a part of human nature, uh, we focus on these happy moments and these happy moments can suddenly make us forget about all the sad moments. Okay. And this is what uh, Napoleon is doing. And later on, we're going to meet that uh, Napoleon even allows Moses back onto the farm. And we're going to see why again, again, and again, to uh, remind the animals of such an amazing place, such as Sugar, County, Sugar Candy Mountain. And if we look together here, uh, uh, this is, um, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, if you look together at this uh, particular, uh, again, all right, uh, here, Napoleon allows Moses to return in chapter nine after an absence of several years. Why? All right. To take the animal's mind off the laborers' conditions in which they now live. So basically, it's a way of uh, um, deviating them. Let us make them uh you know let's make the animals not think let's give them anything to keep them busy and to basically remind them that there's this promised land there's this heaven this sugar candy mountain that they will look forward to and it gives the animals hope uh that there is a better uh you know there is a better situation afterwards so let's keep going in this life uh, until we reach this goal okay so it's basically giving them this false hope even though the animals or the pigs denied the existence of sugar, uh, the existence of Sugar Candy Mountain, they still uh, uh, wanted them or Moses around. And Moses, what Moses was not productive on the farm, and they uh, gave him the the beer as Mr. Jones did. So slowly, we see a, tr uh, a trend here. That is what the animals or the pigs specifically are becoming more and more very close to humans. The picketing their vices. Uh, whether it's drinking or dealing with money or trading with humans, okay, sleeping in beds, sleeping in the farmhouse. Uh, uh, um, uh, gradually, we're going to see until chapter 10, which is the next chapter, how the pigs are going to transform into exactly just like the humans, which basically shows Joseph Stalin uh, coming in uh, as the promised leader that's going to uh, ex uh, you know, carry out the laws of animalism or communism of equality and gradually uh, giving too much power with no one looking after him. Okay, remember, it's always uh, good to give power, but someone has to ask this leader, you know, someone has to look after that this power is not being manipulated and taken advantage of. Okay, so let's just pay close attention to how uh, Napoleon is having these spontaneous demonstrations, again, as a way for the animals to keep busy, to keep their minds off of thinking about their struggles, about their hunger. OK, uh, to deviate them and to basically make them think that life on the farm is just amazing. OK, reciting poems about Napoleon's honor, carrying a banner uh, that's basically says long live comrade Napoleon. Napoleon leading uh, uh, the actual line. All right. With uh, all this glory. OK, and reminding the animals again and again, the animal farm is doing great. OK, with these statistics and these numbers. OK, all this is just a big fake frontier that they are building just for the animals to uh, not think that something is wrong happening and to keep their minds off of their troubles and hardships and just to keep them going, thinking that things are actually great. OK, thanks, Yanano. All right. Uh, volunteers to read next, please. OK, Judy, please. In April, Animal Farm was proclaimed a republic, and it became necessary to elect a president. There was only one candidate, Napoleon, who was elected anon anonymously. Unanimously. On unanimously. Good. Unanimously same... means that everyone agreed to elect him. Okay. If we take a unanimous decision in grade eight that we will go to Cairo Festival. That means everyone in the classroom agreed to Cairo Festival. Okay, not one person said, no, we should go to City Stars. Okay, so uh, uh, basically here shows again that when they decided to turn Animal Farm into a republic and actually find a president or elect a president, the only one that ran and the only one that was elected was obviously Napoleon. No one would dare go against Napoleon. Okay, as a as a you know as in competition with Napoleon to run for this 
uh, uh, you know, for this uh, for this election. Okay, continue, Judy. On the same day. On the same day, it was given out that fresh documents had uh, had been discovered, which revealed the for further details about Snowball's complicity with the drones. It now appeared that Snowball had not. Uh, 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 Snowball had not, as the animals uh, had previously imagined, merely attempted to lose the battle of the culture by means of a strat 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 strategy okay. but had been openly fighting on drones side in fact it was the it was he who it was he who had the, actually been the leader of the human forces and the, and had been and had the charge into battle with the words uh, long live humanity okay so let's just be reminded here that we have another question um that i'm going to share with you uh, all right, as uh, this is going to be one of your uh, questions for homework, we're going to see that again, uh, Napoleon is going to continue, all right, alter the facts about the, uh, 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 again, the, the facts about the, um, the battles. Okay, uh, there was a question here. Okay, it wasn't here, but again, I just need you guys to remember uh, here that Na uh, Napoleon is going to keep altering uh, the story about the Battle of the Cowshed. First, uh, they said that he, uh, him and Mr. Jones were uh, in, uh, basically, because this is going to be an important question that we need to remember for the term exam. So I need to, I need you guys to remember all the, the details that how he altered the Battle of the Cowshed. First, it was stated that he was working alongside or uh you know along with as a secret agent for mr jones okay first it was stated that uh when the animals argued that but he got shot okay mr jones actually shot him he got hurt or hurt or wounded on his back with one of mr jones's uh pellets and uh the pigs or snow uh, napoleon explained that this was part of the strategy okay this was a part of the uh of what the plan was Okay, for him to get hurt uh, in a fake way so that he would leave uh, and then the farm would be out for grabs for Mr. Jones and his men. All right, now they're changing it the second time, uh, saying here that Napoleon, I mean, Snowball was actually was not just a uh, in, uh, an accomplice with Mr. Jones, but he was actually the leader of this of, for the humans. And when Snowball entered the, the fight or the, the battle, he screamed out, long live humanity. Okay, so uh, again, this is something that Snowball definitely didn't do. So they just keep altering the situation uh, or the, the reality of the battle to, uh, to show that Snowball was such a treacherous person or a betrayal, uh, you know, someone who betrayed the trust of animalism and so on. Okay, uh, the wounds on, go, go ahead, Judy, the wounds on. The wounds on Snowball's back, uh, which a few of the animals still remember to have seen, had been inflicted by Napoleon's teeth. Okay, so here he didn't know. Snowball didn't get hurt by the gunshots of uh, 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 of of the of Mr. Jones's gun, but they were actually Napoleon coming in and digging his teeth into Snowball's back, and this is how this is how Snowball got hurt. Okay, so here they're just altering. This is very important to remember. Okay, uh, we saw the altering happens uh, gradually. Uh, first, you need to know the first the first way how the, it was altered and also uh, the second way how, how it was all altered or the final way, which is this one. Okay, so make a, a note for yourselves in your, uh, in your, in your novels uh, to, to realize this. Okay, continue, Judy, mm -hmm. in the middle. Go ahead, Judy. Okay, I think Judy got disconnected. Okay, can you please pick up the reading for us, Reem? Reem? 
Rim, hello. Oh, it's fine. Go ahead. I can see. Yes. Unless someone else. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. Um, uh, just on the other side of uh, that dark cloud that you can see out there, it lies Sugar Candy Mountain, that happy uh, country where we we poor animals shall rest forever from our labors. He even claimed to have been there on the on one of his higher flights and to have seen the everlasting fields of clover and the lion seed, the cake and lump, lump sugar growing on the hatches. Many of, uh, many of the animals believed in their lives now or the reason were hungry and neighbors. Was it uh, not right and just and just that helped to determine what the attitude of the pigs toward Moses. The stories about sugar, uh, sugar candy mountain were lies, ounce of beer uh, after his hoof did the never. Indeed, all the animals worked like slaves that year. Apart from the regular work of the farm and the, the rebuilding of the window, there was the schoolhouse for the young pigs, which was started in the marsh. Some, sometimes the longer hour on the insufficient. Insufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, insufficient food were hard, were hard to bear, but um, but boxer never flattered. In nothing that okay, he so said. Let's just pause here for a second, Judy. Okay, I need you guys to take note of Moses' return. Okay, and despite the fact that he wasn't productive, and uh, despite the fact that he, uh, if you guys remember previously, the pigs were very annoyed, unbothered. Uh, they didn't want him to stay on the on the uh, on the farm because he was spreading such lies about this uh place called sugar candy mountain so we're going to be asked to compare i need you to make a note to yourselves on the term exam uh you're going to need to be uh, you need to be aware of uh how the animals or how the pigs denied moses or how they declined or did not need to accept or did not want the animals to accept the stories of sugar candy mountain and now suddenly napoleon wants them to think that sugar candy mountain exists even though he's denying its ex its existence he still keeps uh moses around and gives him uh these uh, this beer okay to keep him happy on the farm because he's fulfilling something for him and which is what guys which is again uh now the uh, now uh to keep the animals minds off of their struggles all right he, to keep them thinking that there is a better place and that will push them forward to just keep going and to not worry or to worry less about their current conditions previously they didn't want the animals to believe in a better place they needed them to uh work hard on making animal farm the better place okay now uh we see here that uh they want them to believe that um that this place really does exist because you know now they're living in such horrible conditions uh, so this will just give them hope that they can just keep going with their current lives until they reach this wonderful place. Okay, Hannah. Uh, Miss Howard, does he want uh, to kill them? Any, any? Does he want? Uh, is he thinking like Jones? Is he thinking about killing his uh, the animals? Yeah, no, I mean, any is he, um, any wanting to be like he's getting any the any he, 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 he's being like Jones, any he, he's becoming evil like him. Oh, of course, yes, it's it's very apparent that he is definitely all right. Uh, the way that he is, um, you know, he's doing everything that Mr. Jones is doing so far, right? Uh, 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 from uh, from you know, from starving the animals to um, giving them very reduced portions of food and rations uh, to even making them work uh, on Sundays, even though Mr. Jones even gave them Sunday off, you know. So here we see that things are actually worse. Uh, and one of the topics here that you guys are going to be doing is comparing Manor Farm to the, uh, you know, how things were during Jones's days to how things are, do, uh, are, are an animal farm under Napoleon's uh, leadership. And when you do the comparison, you guys will be able to tell for yourselves that things during Napoleon, that, you know, the rules or the way of life during uh, Napoleon's days 
are far worse than actually Mr. Jones. Okay, uh, 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 in terms of everything, in terms of food, in terms of trust, uh, uh, the executions, uh, at least here, the animals now, uh, they're afraid to speak their minds. Or uh, pay attention to the thing that I highlighted here, that when they did not enjoy this spontaneous demonstration, uh, what did they do? They made sure that they complained about it when the animals or the pigs and the dogs were not around. So here we see that the animals are living in actual fear. Did this fear exist during uh, Jones's day? Uh, no, okay, uh, not that we saw, okay? Uh, uh, they were able to at least speak their minds. Now the animals are even in fear of speaking their minds. Okay, so about Moses back again, is that now also Napoleon and the pigs want the animals to believe in the existence of Sugar Candy Mountain as a way to do what? Uh, again, I'm gonna bring it to you here. Uh, again, to take the animals' minds of the laborious conditions that they're now living in and to basically give them hope, all right? The existence of this uh, Sugar and Candy Mountain, which is equivalent to heaven, all right, is basically uh, giving the animal hope that to keep going in this life, to bear, uh, the, their current situation and to uh, uh, to keep going until maybe they have a better life in the afterlife. So please take notes uh, of this here because we will see. Ms. Yasmin? Yes, Monica. Uh, when I searched uh, Moses' representation, it said it represented the Russian Orthodox Church Yes. because it was close with the monarchy. And exactly. Good. It worked uh, religion here. Well, it worked hand in hand with the monarchy of uh, Joseph Stalin. And uh, here, uh, the, the way of how religion is used in the novel is, a, is of a way to, uh, uh, to basically make the animals uh, bear and put up uh, with these horrible conditions and basically not complain. So yes, Yanano, you're right. Working hand in hand with the monarchy. Perfect. Okay, so Moses here is a symbol of religion or uh, of basically what the afterlife and the here sugar cane, uh, sugar candy mountain uh, is equivalent to the idea of heaven, or this is the afterlife or this uh, amazing place that we go to after uh, we live a life of horrible uh, hardships and labor and just basically, you know, giving them hope and uh, uh, strength to keep going. Okay, so they kept him. Uh, and just remember also that the pigs denied the existence of Sugar Candy Mountain, yet they still allowed him on the farm and uh, he wasn't working. OK, but they yet allowed him on the farm and they even gave him an allowance of a gill of beer a day. All right. So here we see that um, Napoleon is is basically acting very uh, uh, fickle. All right. To deny the Sugar Candy Mountain stories yet, uh, yet gives, allows Moses to stay and even to give him some type of uh, uh, compensation to stay, which is this beer, all right? And again, it's the same action, like back to Hannah's word of how Napoleon is becoming more and more, and more like Mr. Jones. He's giving him the same uh, compensation that, that Mr. Jones used to give him. If you guys remember the whole beer soaked in, uh, the bread soaked in beer, same concept, okay? All right, Judy, please continue. Oh, is he just entering? All right, Judy, can you please continue? Okay, Reem, can you pick up? With, I feel like Judy's struggling with her connection. Oh, I'm back. Oh, you're back. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, where did that? After? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, after his hoof had healed up, Boxer worked harder than ever. Indeed, all animals worked like slaves that year. Apart from the regular work of the farm and the rebuilding of the windmill, there was uh, there was the schoolhouse for the young pigs, which was started in March. Sometimes the long, long hours of insuffic insufficient food were hard to bear. But Boxer never flattered, and nothing that he said or did was there any sign that his strength was not what it had been? It was only his appearance that was a little uh, a little altered. His uh, his hide was uh, less shiny than it has used it had used to be. 
uh, and his great uh, hunches seem to have uh, shrunk them. So basically, the guys, other... here we can sum up this uh, part if you want to just sum it up in different wordings that are easier to comprehend. We can just say that his muscles were basically decreased, okay? His muscle mass or the muscularity of his body has shrunk. He's not as muscular as before. And of course, here, the first reason that you might think is because that he's not eating uh, as well as he was eating before due to the less rations of food. So the animals are, uh, uh, of, of course, looking at his demeanor or his appearance, and they're seeing that Boxer is not the same uh, as he was. Okay, his muscularity has shrunk or his muscles shrunk. He's not as muscular, muscular and, uh, you know, his strength seems to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, changed a bit. All right. So how did they say uh, or they predicted uh, they were saying that boxers will pick up when the spring grass comes on? That means when the grass uh, starts to grow back, uh, he's going to have more food to graze on. OK, or to eat. And uh, when the spring grass comes back, he'll be able to eat more and he will grow grow fatter okay uh, uh so they were basically saying that um things will become better for boxer once he starts consuming the spring grass okay uh continue here uh, uh start from here sometimes and sometimes on the slope leading to the top of the quarry uh, when he breaks the his muscles against the weight of the the weight of some vast boulder it seemed uh, that nothing kept him from him on his uh, feet except uh, except the will to continue at such uh, times his lips were seen to form in the words i will work harder he had no voice left once again clover and benjamin warned him to take care of his health but box 